Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I think it's time we tackled a common form of Brexit disinformation again. And it is disinformation because those propagating it may be ignorant to an extent about things they're talking about, but they also know they're lying. It is the claim that trade is doing better outside of the EU than when we were inside. And the claims all state that they get their data from the AF Office for National Statistics. But going to the ONS site to try and back up these claims somehow shows that the claims are all a lie. Quelle surprise. And I'll be explaining what exactly the data shows, what the NAS ONS does say, and what it's not even hypothetically possible for our trade to have done anything other than suffer since we left the single market and customs union. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification icon. So the claim generally looks like this. Th this particular gentleman I'm clipping here is not the only one engaged in this form of disinformation. It's just the one that finally broke the, the straw that broke the camel's back and got me to write this video because I just thought like, I've seen too much of this at the moment. The claim is that trade has actually increased since Brexit. The claim further states that these are official ONS statistics. However, when they present their stats in the form of an attached image, they never seem to be from the ONS. This is clearly a photo of a section of a newspaper, undoubtedly a pro-Brexit newspaper. I've seen similar tweets copying graphics from pro-Brexit websites. I'll tell you what I've never seen from any of the people making these claims. Anything clipped from the Office for National Statistics, and they never link to the web page itself. Possibly because it blows a few holes in their claims, but more likely because they have never visited the Office for National Statistics website in their lives. They're just reading this clip from, from a pro-Brexit website which they frequent or a pro-Brexit newspaper which they read and go, oh, look at that, I'll post that on Twitter. First of all, let's look at the latest ONS report. And unlike the snake oil salesman, I'll link the pages in the description below for you to check out yourself. Now, it makes a number of points throughout the summary. First, it says that unlike otherwise, sorry, unless otherwise specified, data has not been adjusted for inflation. It also notes that the way they collect data on EU trade changed in both January 2021 and January 2022. That will, of course, be because various Brexit controls came online in those months. So you have to be careful when comparing the data. This is why it's very, very important, if you want the facts and not comforting lies, to read the analysis that comes with the ONS data, because they will point things out for you. But when you see values like those appear in the newspaper article, they are in the pounds as they were at the time. They have not been adjusted for inflation. So let's look at exports to the EU with this claim. So this claim says we exported 14.3 billion pounds to the EU in September 2019. Now let's head to the trusty Bank of England inflation calculator in September 2022. The Bank of England inflation calculator is really good because inflation was so volatile. It gives you a month by month breakdown for the last bit of 2022. So you can actually do it for September. So that would be, in real terms, £16.4 billion worth of trade last September. So you look at it and you go, well, it was £16.8 billion worth of trade. So it's, it is actually an increase in real terms on the exports in 2019. Although I'll be coming back to that. But the exports to the rest of the world, you'll notice, look like they haven't changed at all. £16 billion in September 2019. £16 billion in 2022. But with inflation, the equivalent exports in September 2022 should have been £18.4 billion. So that's actually like a 13% drop in exports by value to the rest of the world. That's also important. And then you'll go, but, but Phil, it, it, it is showing an increase in the value of exports to the EU in 2022 as compared to 2019, for September at least. What's going on there? I thought we had these horrendous trade barriers that made trade with the EU especially difficult. Yeah, we do. It makes no sense that our exports would actually increase when exporting has been made more expensive, more time consuming, less reliable, and in some cases, goods that can't be exported at all. But coming back to that boost in trade, comparing September 2019 and 2022, if trade barriers make exports more difficult, how did we raise the value of our exports even when adjusted for inflation? Well, two things are at play here. First, do you remember September 2022? Do you, do you recall what was like the big news story at the time? That was when Liz Truss's growthonomics crashed the value of the pound. That suddenly made British goods way cheaper to everyone else, including the EU. 
It's why September is a particularly good month for Brexiteers to use export data. Though their same argument will fall flat when I get my hands on the full 2022 data. The second thing at play here is thanks to Mad Vlad, Europe's got a bit of an appetite for oil and especially gas from countries that aren't Russia. We have been selling massive amounts of gas in particular to countries in the EU over the summer, especially while they were topping up their gas reserves, something we didn't really think about until very recently. The combination of these two things meant that even adjusting for inflation, yes, we exported slightly more to the EU in September 2022 compared to the same month in 2019 when the pound was actually rising against the euro and there wasn't an emergency need for a load of something we were selling in Europe. But instead of cherry picking one month where the government crashed the pound and Europe was still buying gas in massive amounts, why not look at another month? I mean, what's so special about September? We've got the data for October. Not been fully analysed yet, but we've got the trade data. In October 2019, we exported 14.64 billion to the EU. Now, taking inflation into account, for October 2022, that would work out 17.14 billion. But in October 2022, we actually exported 16.29 billion to the EU. So that's a 5% drop in exports by value. Now, you won't see Brexiteers pointing that one out. And for the avoidance of doubt, the ONS report does say that our drop in exports to the EU in October was driven by a drop in export fuel. So it's not just me imagining a scenario. That's what the ONS say. They said this will have been due to the fact that EU countries will have basically met their gas storage quotas. Now, I don't want to cast aspersions here, but it is just possible that Brexiteers will want to bandy about September trade data rather than the whole year of 2022 to date, or even the latest month's data, because it was a month where the pound crashed, making exports cheaper, and we were still selling large volumes of fuel to Europe ahead of winter energy demands. So whenever you see the Brexiteers claiming that trade has gone up, whether with the EU or anywhere else, you may want to ask how that is possible. For the EU, we now have huge trade barriers in our way. That can only possibly reduce trade, of course. Ridiculous to think otherwise. As for the rest of the world, how would our trade improve as a direct result of Brexit? Oh yeah, Brexit trade deals. I mean, trade can improve with countries around the world, of course, but our deals, our Brexit trade deals with them, are either on equal or worse terms than the EU have. We don't have any deals that are better than the EU have. So there's no way any of it could be down to Brexit. If our trade with a particular country improves, it would have also improved as an EU member. But some trade went down. We know, for example, that our trade with Japan suffered as a direct result of our post-Brexit trade agreement with them. But it's all very well me going through claims like this, pointing out what the ONS actually says and applying a bit of time and math to the situation. Let's be honest, the people that these lies are targeting are not going to do that. They're not going to check out the ONS reports. It's often difficult to pick out the data you want anyway. You do have to work at it. They're not going to read through the explanation about how trade data has changed since Brexit. They will look at claims like this, think, oh, it's from the ONS, so it must be accurate. Oh, I saw another claim in a completely different media outlet that said the same thing. Oh, it must be true. They'll believe it. So how much of a problem is it? Arguably not as much of a problem as we may think. 2022 was actually a bumper year for Brexiteers, really. You wouldn't think so, but it was. Because our economy suffered so much worse than others in 2020 and 2021, thanks to a combination of cretinous Tories and their cretinous Brexit, that our growth in 2022 actually looks good compared to economies who made their recovery much more quickly. It actually allowed the UK to look good when actually it was a reflection of economic mismanagement. But that's gone now. Growth figures will look very bad in 2023 and 2024. As for trade figures, they can't hide the poor performance of trade around the world even in 2022. And that should be a big deal because we were told we were leaving the EU to get better trade around the world. I mean, it's gone down. But in terms of trade with the EU, cherry picking a month in 2022 here and there when the pound crashed and everyone needed to buy fuel from anywhere but Russia, that can work now. That works now because September 2022 is quite a recent month. You'd think, oh yeah, it's up to date information. It won't seem like such a clever comparison to make in a year's time or two years time 
or three. In three years' time, they're still going on about September 2020. I telling their grandkids, I remember the great month of September 2022. Yeah, it's not going to work in a few years, is it? And given that 2022 was actually a good year for people trying to misuse statistics in favour of Brexit, and the public still turned towards an ever greater proportion wanting to return to the EU, what on earth's public opinion going to be on Brexit when even misrepresented data doesn't bat for Team Brexit? If the pound remains reasonably stable next year, especially with regard to 2019 levels, and we aren't selling epic, some epic amounts of gas and oil compared to normal times, well, what then? But when I get hold of the full data set for 2022, I'll be doing a video on this again. Not for a cherry picked month, but the whole year. I'll do it again at some point in 2024 for 2023 data. I shall do it each year to highlight the difference it makes when you raise and lower trade barriers. Because we're in the middle of a period of a few years where trade barriers have been raised. In fact, what I'll be able to do, unfortunately it'll take about 10 years to do it, but what I will be able to do, I'll be able to show you about five years of a Tory government without Brexit, five years of a, well, more than five years of a Tory, well, several years of a Tory government getting ready for Brexit, and then several years of a Tory government with Brexit, then with a Labour government lowering trade barriers. And we'll be able to see the impacts on trade very, very, very clearly. I shall have no problem looking at the data year on year. Brexiteers may find it increasingly uncomfortable. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.